Okay, thanks everyone for joining and for bearing with us with the technical difficulties. Very excited to introduce our speaker today, Andrea Wolf. Andrea is currently a registered dietitian working in the Stanford Family Medicine Clinic. She has been part of the Stanford dietitian team for seven years, and her passion is helping others feel their best by optimizing their health through nutrition and healthy lifestyle. She currently also teaches weight management classes and leads a healthy lifestyle support group at Stanford. So very excited to welcome her today on our topic. Um, but go ahead, Andrea. All right, well, I'm excited to be here today. I'm gonna cook up some complex carbohydrates. I'm gonna make three different side dishes composed of complex carbs and show how to put them together to create a balanced meal. So I know carbs often get a bad rap, but not all are created equal. And carbs are important. They are the preferred source of fuel for our bodies. They give us energy um, through the days because they are broken down into glucose. And choosing more complex carbs, which contain more fiber, they take longer to digest, can be helpful for managing blood sugars. Um, complex carbs, they are longer branches or chains of molecules. And again, they take longer to break down. So they create a slower steady release of glucose into the bloodstream. Doesn't mean you can eat all you want, still have to watch your portions. Um, but some examples are starchy vegetables, whole grains and legumes. And I'll be doing an example of each of those today. Um, and then the difference point between complex and simple are simple carbs are made of just one or two molecules that are easily broken down. So they create a quick release of sugar to the bloodstream. So that can lead to spikes in blood sugar. So examples would be like white bread or donuts, cake, white rice, sugar, added sugars, juice, um, some cereals and pasta. So trying to limit the simple carbs and choosing more complex, complex carbs can be beneficial for our overall health um, and for our blood sugar management. So the first complex carb I'm gonna cook up today is delicata squash. And I love delicata squash because you don't have to peel it. So um, let me go ahead and grab it. So this is what it looks like. And then Catherine, maybe if you wanna take down the um, PowerPoint so people can watch the demo. Um, yes. But here's the squash, so it looks like this. And if you don't love the um, skin of it, you can kind of peel it a little bit and so make it a little bit thinner. Um, so I'm gonna just cut the ends off like so. And delicata squash, it's rich in vitamin A and vitamin C. This one's a little tougher than the other ones I've gotten, um, but it's much easier than the butternut squash. If you get butternut squash, sometimes I'll pop it in the microwave to soften the skin before cutting it. So once you're able to get it in half, like so, um, it looks like this. And you just wanna take a spoon and scoop out the fibrous CD middle part. So I'm gonna just slide these into a bowl right here. Um, and for carb content, about one cup of uncooked squash of the delicata squash is equal to about 18 grams of carbohydrates, um, but it also contains two grams of protein, two grams of fiber. Um, one cup uncooked, um, it, it cuts down once it's roasted. So it'd be about like a half a cup would be like a serving size for carbohydrates. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, scoop in this out. And delicata squash is great. It's, I'm just keeping it simple tonight. I'm just roasting it, um, but you can add it to salads. You can even just scoop out the middle part and, um, and stuff it and bake it that way. So there's a lot of different ways that you can, you can even really um, add like a miso, um, rub on it or different spices or garlic powder. Um, so there's different ways you can definitely flavor it up. Um, you can even add some deliciousness by putting a little bit of Parmesan cheese at the few, in the last few minutes of the baking. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my hands really quick. And then once you have that middle part all scooped out, um, you just put it, down like this and just cut it into little slices. So they look like little, little moons. And then I have a baking sheet right here and I'm gonna just go ahead and put them all on the baking sheet. 
when you're um, placing them on the baking sheet, you want to make sure that they're not overlapping each other. Um, if things are too crowded, it tends to steam up in the oven, so you don't get that nice roasted caramelized um, flavor to them. So I'm going to put these on here. And the recipe link that was on the present PowerPoint presentation, um, it, this is just from the kitchen on online, and they have making it with two squashes, and I'm, I'm just keeping it to one squash today. But definitely leftovers are really good too. So I've been making it this week and eating the leftovers and they still taste really great the next day or even two. It can last for about like five days in the fridge. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them all on my um, baking sheet. And then I'm. you can measure it out. So it'd be about a tablespoon of olive oil. I just like to drizzle it on there give it a little drizzle. And then I like to use my hands when I'm roasting anything and really make sure each piece is really well coated um, with the olive oil. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure it's all really coated. I tend to season after it's been cooked um, with, with the salt and pepper, especially with salt more specifically. I feel like it helps with the texture. So here's all my little moons. Um, I'm gonna wipe the olive oil off my hands and get some up. So it takes about 20, 30 minutes. I find more than 30 minutes to cook. And I will go ahead and kind of flip those halfway through. Um, and while I have the oven on, it's like, why not roast some non-starchy veggies? Cause we're trying to make balanced meals today. So having some carbs, some starchy veggies and some non-starchy. So I just have some broccolini. Um, you don't even have to, you can just like wash it and dry it, but I just cut them in half because when I roast veggies, I like, I don't, I feel like they get a little bit more roasted um, when I cut them smaller. So especially with cauliflower, I like to cut it into small pieces and roast it. Um, during the fall and winter is such a great time to get some veggies and roast them up. Um, you can even roast beans, you can roast mushrooms. You During the summer, I'll do tomatoes, um, parsnips, rutabaga. So there's so many good veggies you can roast. So again, I'm doing the same thing that I did with the squash where I'm just taking my hands and really making sure each piece is coated. So you could do about a tablespoon. I just kind of drizzle it on and just kind of um, eyeball it. Oh, Andrea, you have a question. Um, somebody's asking what the temperature of your oven is. Oh, sorry. I have my oven preheated at 425 degrees. Thank you for asking that question. So for roasting veggies, I usually do between 400 and 450. Um, for the squash, the recipe calls for 425. So I feel like that turns out great. So I'm going to pop these in the oven. And this, the um, non-starchy veggies like cauliflower or the broccoli, that's more like 10, um, 15 minutes. So I'm going to actually set a timer for it for 10 minutes. And I'm going to check back in on those. Leah and Catherine, you might have to help me with, I have some things boiling in the oven, so I may need little reminders. Um, so I have my um, water boiling for my next dish I'm going to make. So I'm going to go ahead and let those roast up. And the next item that I'm going to make today is an ancient grain. It's called um, farro. So I'm going to do this with a lemon herb dressing. And um, farro is a whole, so farro can come in different ways that it's been processed. So you can get the whole grain farro. So um, the whole farro, it can also come pearled or semi-pearled. So I have to admit, sometimes it is tricky to find the whole farro. I get mine online. Um, if you can't find the whole farro, you know, there's so many other grains at the store that you can try. Buckwheat, you could do millet, quinoa, um, or you can get the semi-pearled. It'll still have some of the bran on it. So when it's the whole farro, it retains all of its nutrients and fiber, and it has the bran, which is the fibrous outer layer. It has the endosperm, the starchy middle part, and the germ, which has the nutrients um, in it and some help and some fats. For the pearl. Oh, Andrea, it's hard to hear you. I think it muted.
Uh, your microphone. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Sorry, I called IT to fix it, but I guess it didn't work. Um, sorry, sometimes my computer mutes myself. Um, so for the whole faro, it does take longer to cook. So I know it sounds like a pain, but soaking it overnight, it's it makes it so much easier. It's going to cook quicker. So all you have to do is just put it into a bowl, throw some water over it, just stick it in your fridge and let it let it soak. Um, I'm just making sure my water, I'm going to raise the temperature to get this so it's going to be boiling. So I have my already rinsed um, farro here. I'm doing one cup. Um, and here's like the whole grain um, I was able to get online. A quarter cup of, of dry farro is about 170 calories and 34 grams of protein. A quarter cup dry equals to about a half a cup cooked. So I'm going to go ahead and get this into the pot and get it cooking because it takes a little bit of time. And I'm just using the pot the method for cooking this. Um, and one other tip, um, sorry, if you do soak it overnight, you want to make sure you rinse your farro. You want to make sure you rinse it no matter what before you eat it. Just kind of get that dust and stuff off of it. Um, and you can even toast it before boiling, boiling, it, boiling it. It'll bring out some of its nutty flavor. So I like farro because it's a little bit more of a forgiving um, grain. Um, and you want to cook it to where it's kind of al dente, where it has a little bit of a bite to it. So I'm going to just check on this. I'm going to get my water boiling with a fire. So you want to boil it and then bring it down to a simmer. So again, if you don't soak it, it could take up to an hour for the whole. Um, mm -hmm. With it being soaked overnight, it may take 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. Um, and the pearl, so if you get it without the bran, without that fiber part, it's gonna cook quick. So if your farro doesn't say what it is on it, but it says it cooks in 10 or 15 minutes, that's a good sign that it's that it's the pearled kind. So while that's cooking up, I'm gonna make a yummy dressing for it. Um, Andrea, somebody in the chat mentioned that yeah. you can also buy farro is available at Mediterranean stores. So they have a oh. tip. Yeah, that, yeah, thank you for that great tip for everyone. Um, so the dressing that I'm gonna make today, let me grab my tablespoon. So it's one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. Um, it comes for, I, I adapted this from Love and Lemons. I feel like they have some great veggie recipes on there. I, I like my, my food a little more acidic, so I'm gonna do one tablespoon of lemon juice. And I love using these little mason jars because you can just put the lid on, shake it up, store it for later. I'm gonna do one tablespoon of olive oil. And then I'm going to do um, half a tablespoon of thyme leaves. And I've made it without it, still delicious. So I already have thyme um, already cut up that I'm just gonna pop in there. One garlic clove, it's called for grated, but I'm gonna just, um, use my garlic smasher for it, my garlic press. And then I'm gonna turn this down so it's boiling and again, we want it at like about a simmer. So for garlic, um, what you can do with the clove on it, you can just smash it. Um, and then it's easy to take the, the peel off it. Then I'm gonna just go ahead and pop this in here. Let's see, I'll scoot back a little bit. There's my garlic. And then it's a quarter teaspoon of Dijon mustard. See, okay. grab my salt and pepper as well. And I lost my Dijon. Let me go grab it. Hold on one second. Oh, right in front of me. I was like, I thought I had it out. Here we go. And I'm gonna do a quarter teaspoon. And you can do that to taste. Um, I feel like a quarter of a teaspoon is a good amount. I don't like my things too mustardy. Um, I feel like if you add too much, for me, it's a little too much mustard flavor. And then it's going to be a half a teaspoon of salt. Let me grab my measuring spoon. And pepper to kind of taste, or you could do you know, a little bit of, of pepper. 
And then also there's going to be some parsley in it. But with the parsley, I always like to save my fresh herbs, like parsley or cilantro to the very end before I'm serving it so they don't get too wilted. Um, but that's the dressing. So that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and just take this and I'm going to shake this up. And I'm going to go ahead and um, save it for later. Um, so the leftovers will be good in the fridge for up to four days, um, or you can freeze it in small portions. So like undressed, I would I would freeze it, um, and it'll last uh, for a few months in the freezer. And um, one thing that's nice about farro, again, you can add it to salads. You can even make risotto with it. Um, so there's definitely different ways that you can prepare it. I have one recipe where it's made with green olives. That is super delicious. So it's pretty versatile. Um, all right, so that's the second um, complex carb that we're making for today. Great, and you again, have a couple uh, questions, Andrea, actually. Oh, yeah. Is now an okay time? Yeah, that was great. I'm going to just check on these things, but go ahead and ask. I'm listening. Okay, um, is barley a good choice for a carbohydrate? Oh, you can definitely use barley. In general, about you still have to watch your portion. So again, there's like pearl barley out there too. Um, so for barley, you just, again, watch your por por portions, about a third a cup cooked grains like rice um, is, is about a serving of a carbohydrate. Great. But and another, oh, another question. Um, can you show what individual farrow looks like? Is it shaped like a bean or a pasta? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. So the hole is going to be a little bit darker. So this one's been soaked. So it's a little bit, sorry. It's a little bit plumped up. Let me, it's kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can. Um, it looks like a, almost like a rice, like a darker rice. Can you guys see it? I know it's kind of hard yeah. to see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but it's definitely, it's smaller than a bean. So it's more of like a orzo, I would say, for pasta. It'd be more similar to that. Great. And uh, it's rich in, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, you can go. Yeah, and one thing um, for farro, it's rich in magnesium, zinc, B vitamins. Um, so again, it has a good amount of fiber, five grams of fiber for a quarter cup dry. Um, and it does, you know, it does have carbs. It has 34 grams of carbs for a quarter cup dry, equal to around like a half, probably around a half a cup cooked. Any other questions? Yeah, you have a lot of great questions. Um, mm -hmm. What kind of salt do you recommend using? Is pink Himalayan salt better? Question mark. Yeah, I, you know, I think it's choose one that you like the flavor of it. So salt still salt. So if you have to watch your salt intake, it doesn't mean you can um, just have a bunch more of like Himalayan or I just use like the sea salt. Um, but the sea salt Himalayan has like a little bit different flavor. Um, so I think just use the salt that you like the flavor of. And um, and if you're having to watch your salt intake um, for whatever reason, um, you know, definitely using like lemon juice, um, different spices and herbs can be helpful. And I'm going to check on my broccoli, broccolini. Any more questions? Yeah, that's like good. Yeah. Are you going to be able to share your recipes um, with the recording? Yeah. So they should, I don't know, yeah, are we able to put them like, like attach them to the recording online? I made, I made the slides with the recipes. So yeah, so we should be able to share those. Just check on this. It takes a little longer. So again, I like my veggies kind of roasted up, but I'm gonna go ahead and just flip it. And the squash is looking good. All right, so I'm gonna put my timer on for five minutes for the Check back in on the broccoli news. All right. Any other questions before we move on to the last complex carb? Yes. Is um, one third a cup of cooked farro considered one serving? So it's it's like a quarter cup dry is going to be two servings of carbs. So it's going to be, so if you're looking at, so a quarter cup dry is considered one serving, um, but it, that has 34 grams of carbohydrates. 
And when you cook it, it will kind of pump up. It will get, you know, pump up a little bit. So it'll be closer to around like a half a cup. Um, so I would say for one serving, it it's going to, for one serving of a, if you're looking at carbohydrates, it's going to be closer to like a quarter cup um, cooked, if that makes sense. If you're thinking of one serving of carbohydrates equals 15 grams. Great. And then one more question. When choosing a carbohydrate for um, when living with diabetes, should we choose one with relatively high fiber? Question mark. The fiber um, can help slow down. Fiber takes longer to digest. So it can kind of help slow down the digestion process. And so um, it can create a more slow, steady release of sugar into your bloodstream. So it can be helpful um, for someone that has um, diabetes or blood sugar issues. One thing is though, every body is so different. So if you're checking your blood sugars, you know, for some people they may tolerate fruit or not tolerate fruit, or they may tolerate certain grains and not other grains or beans. So I think just know your body and, and what portions and what works for you if you're testing your blood sugars. But yes, having more of the ones with fiber um, is gonna be helpful compared to if it has like no fiber because it takes longer to digest. And hope, Leah, if you have anything to add to that, feel yeah, free. I think that's a great answer. Um, also, another question, does soaking help grains lose starch and help blood sugar levels? You know, I've, I've, I've researched that before. It's been a while. Um, I don't think so. Um, I think there's there's still going to be the carbs and not, I don't think enough that like starch is going to leach out of it, that it's going to really have much of an impact um, on your blood sugars. But yeah, I don't know if you know otherwise please inform me. I would have to agree. I think you don't lose the carbohydrate, but um, maybe some of the nutrition might be more bioavailable from sprouted um, grains, but not the starch changed. Changed. Catherine, do you have any ideas? I am also not quite sure, but I think general consensus, it doesn't, doesn't affect it too much in terms of losing starch. Okay, great. Well, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna check on the broccolini again. I want it a little brown, but I don't want to burn it. So let me see how it's going. Okay, actually, give it another minute. And I'm gonna toss my squash. Okay. So again, for the squash, you want it to kind of start to caramelize, get a little bit roasted. Um, and so I, I would say about like 15 minutes per side. I could have probably given this one a little bit longer, but I'm gonna go ahead and flip it. And it's getting there for sure. And then again, for the farro, um, it should be about probably around 30 minutes. Um, since it's been soaked, but definitely soak it if you get the whole, because it'll, it'll take a while. It'll definitely save you time. I'll even do that with my oatmeal sometimes, is I'll um, soak it overnight, um, and it cooks quicker. Okay. All right. I hope you guys could hear me while I wasn't close to my um, computer. Um, so the next um, item I'm going to make is a vinegar marinated butter beans. So I took this recipe from Allison Roman. Um, the recipe's online. Um, it's also in the book, Nothing Fancy. But if you have some canned beans just like sitting in your cupboard, this is such a great way to like give it some flavor. Um, and it does take 30 minutes for the flavors to meld together and to marinate. So you do need to kind of think a little bit ahead of time, but it, it only takes a few minutes um, to put together. So I have, you want the bigger the beans, the better for this recipe, um, kind of makes it a little bit more fun. So I have butter beans or lima beans work, but really any beans, I made it with pinto beans before. So you can really use any type in your, um, any type of beans that you have in your cupboard. But I think my broccolini is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out and then we'll get going on the beans. Great, while you're pulling that out, do you wanna answer, um, is it true that cooling starchy foods convert starches to resistant starches and less yeah, likely to spike so, blood sugar? Yes, 
So um, I don't know the all the science behind it, but for like white potatoes and white rice, um, if you cook it and then you cool it for 24 hours, it forms a resistant starch. Um, that it, it's a starch that your body can't digest. And so it, it lowers the carbs, um, I believe about by like half the amount. You, st you know, still watch your portions. Doesn't mean you can eat all you all, all you want of it. Um, but so if you've made like a, a potato salad and you cooked it and you cooled it um, for 24 hours, you know, it's gonna have a little bit less starch that you will absorb. Um, you can reheat it. So if you made potatoes or rice and you reheat it a little bit, um, you can reheat it and you'll still have that resistant starch. Um, so my broccolini is done. It looks pretty good. And again, you can kind of cook it to however you like. So mine's just like a little bit um, starting to brown a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and season it. Um, I'm going to add some salt and I'm going to add some pepper to it. Add this in. And while I'm over here, I'm going to start heating up um, my oven. Oh, sorry, I'm going to start heating up my pan for the beans. So I'm going to put this on low. And I'm going to add about three tablespoons of olive oil. So for the recipe online, they do two cans of beans. I'm just doing um, one can. Um, for today. So I'm going to do about two and a half tablespoons. Again, you don't have to be perfect um, when you're cooking compared to like baking, which makes it makes it nice. So I'm going to get start getting that warmed up. And I'm going to add a clove of garlic to it. So again, I'm going to just smash my garlic, get that skin off. That didn't smash so well. <laughs> Let me smash it, get the skin off, and put it into my garlic press. And for beans, um, about half a cup of beans is a serving size. So for these butter beans, a half a cup is equal to 18 grams of carbohydrates. And they have um, four grams of fiber, so a good decent amount of fiber, and six grams of protein. So beans are a great protein source. So they have that double of the protein, and the fiber to kind of help slow down digestion. Um, so I'm gonna add these to my pan. I'm gonna just put it right in there in the olive oil. And I'm gonna just wait for that to warm up a little bit. I'm gonna grab a spoon to mix it. I'm just flavoring that. And then for the beans, again, you want to make sure you rinse them. So kind of rinse all that liquid um, off them from the can. So I have my, my rinsed beans right here. So once that warms up a little bit, I'm going to throw them in. And for this recipe, um, after they're warm through, um, you can use white wine vinegar or red wine vinegar. I have red wine vinegar today. And I'm going to do a quarter cup of vinegar. And I'm going to just swirl that in after it's through. Um, and beans are really great um, roasted. You can like roast them in the oven and you can add different spices like cumin or paprika and that can make a really great um, snack that has some carb to it but also has a good amount of protein and fiber so it could be a good snack choice. I'm going to go ahead and throw this in my pan. And this is such an easy way again to flavor up any beans you have just sitting in your in your cabinet. And I'm going to stir that. Okay, so I'm going to give that just a minute or two, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to check on my uh, furrow and see how it's see how it's doing. So I'm going to give it a little taste test. Again, I'm just cooking this like pasta, and I want it to where it's al dente. And I feel like with farro, you don't have to be exact with the cookie and it still tastes good. You want to have it have it have a little bit of a bite. I'm gonna rinse this off. Just 
Good. I think I'm going to just give it another minute or, or a few more minutes on there. I hear my hear that garlic on the stove, so I'm going to give this a little swirl. And I'm just feeling them, just feeling the beans, the felt. See if they're warm through yet. I need these a little longer on there. And then the last thing with the beans is I'm gonna go ahead and just grate some um, lemon zest over the top. So I love adding lemon to food. It just gives it such um, brightness. Um, and again, if you're not using salt for whatever reason, adding some lemon to your veggies or um, to your like grains or whatever it is can definitely give it a, a little brightness. So I'm gonna give this another shake. I'm gonna take that off the heat. I'm gonna swirl in my quarter cup of red wine vinegar. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just grate. I like when I do lemon, I just grate it right over the top. Um, and again, you can store these in the in the fridge for like, you know, a week, probably probably the last even longer. So this is a great thing you can have ahead of time, have it for a snack. Add it on top of salads. Um, get some crunchy vegetables to have to have with it. Um, and again, I'm using butter beans or lima beans, but you can really use um, any beans. And that's it for this for this recipe. I'm going to go ahead and just throw it through. And then I'll just off the heat and then I'll just put it in a pan and stick it in my fridge so I have it to add to some some salads this week. Um, all right I'm going to check back on the squash and see how that's going. Oh, one other thing I forgot you know, I always like to season my food so I'm going to add a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt for the beans and again just do it to taste. Let me mix it up one more time. And when you store it, you can drain off the liquid, but I actually just like to store it in with the with that marinade, with the vinegar and with the olive oil. So let's see how this wash is looking. Looking pretty good. I think it just needs a few more minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna just leave it in there for a few more minutes. Looking good. And I think my farro is almost done. Um, so one trick to do so that your farro doesn't get mushy is once it's done cooking, you wanna go ahead and drain it. So I like using a fine mesh um, drainer to, to rinse it out. And you can just put the grains on like a little baking sheet like that and just lay it out to cool so then they don't get all mushy. Um, and then the last thing I'm gonna make is I'm gonna make a quick salad. So again, we want a balanced meal for tonight. So I know we have the broccoli, um, but I just wanna show you how quick it is to put together a salad for dinner. So I just have arugula. I bought it already washed um, and I had some cut up radishes already in my, in my fridge. So I just threw those on top to add a little bit of color. And if you're buying store-bought dressing, it's so easy to make your own. So I'll just show you. I like to eyeball it. Um, but if you are new at making salad dressing, um, rule of thumb is do one part um, vinegar to three parts olive oil. So I like to use, and you can use any acidic thing. So you can do, use vinegars, you can use like lemon juice, whatever it is. So I um, like to use lemon juice. I feel like it has good flavor. It kind of goes with the other items I'm making tonight, how it has lemon juice. So I just kind of eyeball it. I've been making salad dressing for a while, so I can just use my mason jar since it's clear. It's easy to tell. I like my, again, my food a little more acidic, so I do a little bit closer to one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, but like, so if you were measuring it out, you would do like one tablespoon of vinegar to like three tablespoons of olive oil. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of salt and pepper. Um, if you're not using salt, that's totally okay. You could smash a garlic clove in there. You could put some um, different herbs in there to give it flavor. 
And then I can just take my, I love these little jars because you can just mix it in here. And then you could even just pour this into the bottom of your bowl and then put your greens on top and just toss it that way. I have a lid, so I'm just gonna be able to shake my greens. Um, otherwise I like to use a big container so it's easier to toss. Um, and again, you could add some shallots to the salad. You could add some cheese to it. Um, so you could add different, different flavors. I'm just shaking that up so how it starts to emulsify. You could even add a little Dijon um, to your dressing. I'm just keeping things basic tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour it over. And then I'm gonna just shake it up. And uh, arugula is nice too. So like with these jars, you could set some of the salad aside, keep some salad dressing in the jar, and then you have your lunch ready for the next day. You could add some of the beans or some of the grains that we just cooked up and put it on top. So I'm just shaking it up. And that's it. So it, it literally just took me a few minutes to add some extra um, veggies to my meal. All right, so I think my farro should be done, but I'm gonna check on the slosh first. Yeah, thank you, one more minute in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and drain it. So again, I'm gonna just use my here. Okay. Andrea, you're getting kudos with being able to multitask so well in the kitchen. Uh, I was a little nervous, so I did practice. But, um, you're doing a wonderful job. People are. Uh, I don't know if I can multitask and talk. Um, so, but this just kind of shows you it's like you can you know make a few things at once, and then you're like done for a few meals for the week. So you don't need to rinse the the grain once it's um, been cooked. But I'm gonna again just lay it flat. Uh, on here to let it dry. All right, yeah, to kind of let it cool off, I should say. And then uh, give it about 20 minutes, and then you can go ahead, and all you have to do is throw um, this dressing on it and mix it. And then I have um, a half a cup of some parsley that I chopped up and put that in there. It's also really delicious, like not dressed. It, I mean, if you haven't had it, had farro before, it has like this, like, little like definitely a nutty um really good flavor and i like how it has like a little bit of a bite to it so again you want to cook it till dente and cooking it pasta style boiling some water throwing it in um can make it really easy um all right so i'm going to pull out the squash and then that's it and we'll put together some meals i'm getting hungry So it looks pretty good. Um, so here I'll show how it's starting to get like kind of caramelized and it's looking good. You can even brown it if you want a little bit more. Um, I feel like this looks pretty good. Yeah, looking good. And I'm gonna go ahead and just add some pepper and some salt. Again, if you wanted to be extra fancy, you could um, grate some Parmesan cheese on top of it and cook it for another minute or two and let that melt. And I actually have some Parmesan, so I think I'm going to do that. Um, if you're doing Parmesan, Parmesan is pretty salty, cheese is salty, so use less salt um, when you're seasoning it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just put the oven back on and I'll just let it cook for another minute or so. So again, you can just kind of grate it on and you just want it to where it just melts. I'm just using a little bit for flavor. And it's already kind of starting to melt since the pan is hot. Okay, so that's it. So we have three complex carbs. So we did beans, about a half a cup. Again, it's one serving, around one serving of carbs. Um, about a quarter cup cooked of a grain is about a serving. So again, grains are around a third a cup and um, half a cup cooked squash or a cup raw is a serving size. So 
Let me put together some meals. So Kenneth already has half of it plated. So here, oh, I don't want to spill it all. Um, I did, so thinking of the plate method, I did, this is actually portioned out to a half a cup of beans. And I did a half a cup of the farro. So this is going to be three around three servings of carbohydrates. And I have the broccolini. And then again, I'm going to fill up the rest of my plate with some salad. And I actually like, like to put the beans sometimes or the grains just like right on top of my salad. Um, but there's like a delicious balanced meal. Um, and you can use it for leftovers. Um, another quick thing to do, I'm going to go ahead and just pop the squash out. Um, is I just had a rotisserie chicken. So this is, so the first meal meal is a veggie. So this one, I did a cup of a squash, so two servings of carbs. Um, here is actually measured this out, it's three ounces of chicken. If you're watching your fat and take um, just our calories, just take the skin off. And then I'm gonna just add in some salad and there I got half of my plate um, is veggie. So another delicious meal. Again, you can like mix and match all of these items, put it together for a few meals. Um, if you're spending time in the kitchen cooking, make extra so your lunch is like done for the next day. You don't have to think about it. Um, so that's it for my um, cooking demo today. Great. Oh my gosh, it looks so amazing. Andrea, I wish I could pop over for dinner. Um, <laughs> A question is somebody has, um, what, what's the total carb for the meals? For the meals, so for the grain and the beans, so I did a half a cup of the beans. So, I mean, if you're being like technical, that would be like 18 grams of carbohydrates. And I did a half a cup cupped of the farro. I don't have like exact because I don't know how much, you know, from a quarter cup, um, but in general, it'll be about like double so this will probably be around like 34 grams. They both have a fair amount of fiber. So, you know, you could take a, deduct a little bit of the carbs if you wanted to, but it's gonna be around like three grams of, sorry, three servings of carbohydrates. So kind of close to around 45, 50 grams of carbs. Um, if you're watching your um, carb intake, again, you could just substitute and do some like chicken along with the farro, or you could just do a quarter cup and then that would make it two servings of, of carbohydrates. I hope I made sense. Uh, definitely. People are and saying then, it looks delicious. And then the, 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 for this one, so one cup, I did one cup of cooked um, squash. And so that's about two servings of carbohydrates. So about one cup of um, raw squash is about a serving and it, you know, it, once the water is taken out, it, it gets smaller. So about half a cup of it cooked is about um, two, two serving, about um, half a cup cooked would be one serving of carbs. That's one cup cooked, so it's two servings of carbs. Great. We have a question around carb servings. I know this is kind of hard to answer because it's so customized, but do you have a, a range that you give for people who are male versus female versus teens for carbs per meal? I, yeah, it is really individualized. So I would say like general recommendations are usually between like two to four servings um, per meal. If you're like really active, maybe, you know, it could be a little bit more than that. Um, but in general, I, I usually say two to four. I don't know if Leah, if you have other, um, if you have a, a extra advice on that. Yeah, no, I think that sounds great. Um, you have another question. What are your thoughts on a more keto-centric preparation or about keto in general for people living with diabetes? Yeah, keto is a pretty strict diet. So it's having 20 grams of total carbs per day or less. So it's hard to sustain. Um, I think for some people, it, it can be helpful with controlling their blood sugars, but again, doing it in a healthy way of using whole foods, thinking more of a Mediterranean style keto diet. Um, you have to watch your cholesterol labs, choosing healthier fats if you're on it. Um, so I think if, if someone wants to do it and try it, um, it is hard to sustain. And again, not all carbs are bad. So um, 
you don't have to give up all carbs um, in order to control your blood sugars. So um, it's hard for me to say like, yes or no. I think that's another one that's really individualized. Um, but, you know, if you go, I, I like to focus on long-term sustainable healthy eating patterns. Um, and so keto, I find for a lot of people, it's hard, again, it's hard to um, do longer long-term because it is really restrictive. Um, but yeah, you could cut back. So you could just do like a half a cup of the, of the squash and it still would be really delicious and filling up, adding more broccolini there. And that would only be one serving of a carbohydrate. So again, there's ways to, um, to kind of adjust your carb intake. Yeah, great. I, it sounds like a lot of people have very customized questions. I think at Stanford, we have over 55 dietitians, all specializing in different um, areas. So if you are seen at Stanford, you can always ask for a referral um, by a provider and see somebody in, that knows all of your labs and everything. Um, because somebody else has another question, Andrea, about just how many carbohydrates you recommend for someone who's not living with diabetes, which is a tricky question. Yeah. So yeah, it depends. And it depends on like where you're, I always say like, where are your carbs coming from? What else are you eating? Um, you know, I think two to four is kind of just like a good general, you may not have to be as strict as like two, um, but it, it depends on other factors as well. But I'd say in general about, again, I like the plate method. I feel like the plate method kind of applies to everyone where you fill up half your plate with the non-starchy veggies, do a quarter plate of your protein and keep your carbs to like a quarter of your plate. And that's going to be a good balanced meal. And then using healthy fats like avocado, um, olive oil um, is a way to kind of keep things like balanced out. Um, so for me, it's like, you know, using your palm um, for carbs, thinking of like a tennis ball or like um, a small handful. Yeah, great. And then also just to highlight, um, Catherine had done a mindful eating webinar a couple months ago, which I think is also great. If you're kind of trying to figure out exact grams, maybe check out her mindful eating too. And um, just kind of look at all the different ways that we can and lenses we can look at or in regards to our eating. Um, you don't actually have any more questions, just a lot of thank yous, Andrea. Um, thank you so much for creating all these fabulous meals and making it look so seamless and so quick and easy. Um, lots of thank yous. So thank you for your time and your expertise. We all appreciate it. Thank you. Sorry for running a little over time and the technical difficulties in the beginning. Bye. Thank you, everyone.